Well, let's talk about C names. Um, there's actually quite a bit to talk about um, concerning C names. So pools no longer contain a pool no longer contains a C name setting. So it used to be that C names were part of the pool definition in versions prior to version 12.0. Now C names are their own type that can be associated with a wide IP or a pool. So let's let's also talk about a C name versus an alias. A C name is a is a type of wide IP. So it is an actual wide IP that's defined. When you do an alias for a particular um, wide IP, you're adding a C name to Zone Runner. So you're still to get that resolution, you have to go all the way to Zone Runner. Whereas a C name type associated with the wide IP will answer within the GTM code itself. So if you want to get, and this is this can be a little confusing. If you want to get the same type of C name behavior you're used to seeing, where you get the you ask for something and you're told that it's a C name for another name, and then um, that you then get a resolution or you get the IP address back um, of that um, C name IP. So you're going to want to use a type A wide IP, and you're going to want to put a C name pool with it. So C names are also special because they can be attached to any type of wide IP um, and so I can have a C name pool associated with a type A record, a type quad A, a type MX. It is the, um, it can universally be applied across all of the different um, wide IP types. And you use this to get this normal C name behavior that I'm gonna ask for a type A um, record for a particular domain name. I'm going to get a response back with the C name and I'm going to get if I have that recursion turned on I'm going to get back what the IP address of the actual domain name is. So also there's the concept of static targets that allows a member to point to a name that does not exist on the on, as a wide IP on the GTM. Um, so we can point it off to some other non-authoritative um, source or location. And this, we're not going to attempt any external resolution on this. If you point us to a different domain, or if, if it's pointing to a different domain, the GTM is just going to send that back and not try to do any other kind of resolution. So let's take a look at a configuration example for C names. Um, in these, we're going to say that minimal response is disabled. Um, if my minimal response is enabled, you just get an answer back for whatever um, pool um, the wide IP points to if minimal response is disabled, we're going to try to go a little further and provide some more information. Um, the important thing to note about GTM, or I'm sorry, C names, is that the GTM is going to chase those until the question that was asked and the answer type do not match. So I have some examples of those. In the top box, we're doing a dig against www.example.com. And the response we're going to get back is we're going to get a C name for www.gslb.example.com. So what happened was a C name can contain any kind of record or can point to any kind of wide IP, whether it's a um, A, quad A, or MX record in this case. So the, we came in looking for a, an answer to www.example.com, a type A record. We hit the C name pool, but the C name pool pointed us to um, a wide IP that only had an MX type defined on the GTM. So we're not going to do that additional querying because it doesn't make sense. We're not going to provide anything back that's sane. So we're going to stop resolving and we're just going to just going to give back that www.gslb.example.com, the C name itself, and not try to do any um, further resolution. So you can see this if you have a misconfiguration on your DTM. It may be that you have that C name and you meant to have it point to a type A wide IP um, behind it, but for some reason that's not there. The type was entered wrong, and we're just not going to do anything with that. Now if we continue to the example on the bottom, we're doing that exact same query, only this time our wide IP is of type A, we have a C name pool, but that C name pool is pointing to a wide IP that has a type A um, wide IP defined for that name. And then we're going to just continue the resolution and find the pool member and get it an address to return. So we are going to continue that resolution. So we're going to get the C name for www.gslb.example.com. Then um, since we have minimal response disabled, we're going to go ahead and provide the resolution for that also and give you back an IP address. So we have our MX record or a wide IP that's an MX wide IP. 
and our user is going to query that. So the CNAME pool in this case is pointing to a wide IP that's an MX type. So we're gonna go ahead and follow that CNAME because we haven't, um, we have a type that it can point to and the GTM can continue to do something. This wide IP MX has a pool that points to a wide IP. Um, in this case, it's mail.example. Um, mail I'm sorry. Mail.example.com is this, M, this um, MX wide IP. We're going to go to the pool and we're going to see that that pool contains two different or one member, but it has both, but that wide IP resolves to both an A and a quad A pool. So we're going to continue and do the resolution here. You can see that example.com was what was asked for um, a C name. The C name pool returned mail.example.com. The GTM went ahead and said, okay, mail.example.com, the MX record for that is www.example.com. And then in this additional section, we looked up www.example.com and there were both a, there was both an A and a quad A um, wide IP associated with it. And we actually returned um, two pool members from each of those in this additional section. So this is putting everything together that we've talked about as far as GTM chasing names and then how wide IP members or a wide IP can have an A and a quad A um, instance that may be, that, that both of them may be returned sometimes. So let's talk about C names and configurations of static targets. Um, before we had a wide IP, it pointed to a pool with a static C name and that was the end of it um, in versions prior to 12.0. After, in, in 12.0, we're gonna have that wide IP A and a wide IP quad A, and each of those is gonna be defined independently, and we can still put static targets, or we're gonna create a pool, um, and then we're going to define a static target in that pool, but they're each gonna be, in, before that wide IP could handle static C names for both A and quad A, and afterwards, we need to do one for each type if we're gonna define that. Another thing to know um, with C names, you can get yourself into some trouble if you um, introduce a loop. We will only recursively query down for five levels or five query depth. So if we start to go past, um, we'll stop querying. In this case, you can see that a C name pool can point to another wide IP that has a C name that points to a wide IP that has a C name. So you can get pretty deep. Um, I would say that if your customer or if your um, yeah, if your customer is doing this, it's probably not a good idea if they have minimal um, response disabled because they're doing a lot of work to get that resolution. But we will allow that. Mm -hmm. And if they put one more query on top of this, we would just return the last, what we had up to that point and we would stop. The other thing this protects against is a situation like this, where you may have a couple C names pointing to wide IPs, pointing to C names, and you lose your way somewhere in there and all of a sudden you have a C name pool pointing back to the original whip and you have a nice loop here. So we'll go query down to um, five queries, but on that sixth recursive query, we're just gonna stop and return what we have so far. So that's just something to know. It's if customers have loops like that, they have problems with their configuration or if they have really deep configurations like we saw in the, in the previous slide, uh, that and they have minimal response to say, well, it's probably something that they need to address because it could be causing them some performance headaches.